Okay, so uh, games need to be able to do a couple things. They need to be able to update, like the location of the ball has to change over time. And then, so things that are automatically moving need to be able to automatically move and update their location and their properties. And then they need to be able to, we need to draw it to an image, and then we need to display that image. And so inside uh, the uh, run loop, we're going to have the run method, which starts with our thread. We're going to have this method, uh, we're going to create the game loop. So we're going to say while running, and that's going to be a Boolean, which we need to also create. So we'll start the fields out here. So Boolean running. While running is true, we want to do three things. We want to update everything. Then we want to be able to draw everything to an image off screen. So we're going to like render or draw everything. And then we want to display the image on the panel and on the frame. So those are three things that we need to create. So we'll just create those methods. And it's just going to be public void because it doesn't need to return anything. Update. That's going to be one of our main methods. Then public void draw. That's another main method. And then our to display the stuff on the panel, you've already done this. There's that method called paint component, which is able to repaint a J panel that, you know, so our panel extends J panel. We just need to override that method. So we're going to say public, pubic, public, void, paint component. And this is an overridden method, so it must be exactly like paint component, graphics, G. And we'll need to import the graphics class from Java Aut, which is just another library. And then we're going to uh, cast it to a graphics 2D object, which is just an updated version of the graphics object. Graphics 2D G2, we're going to call it, equals, and we have to cast, so we put it in parentheses to say, slam the data that I'm asking you to grab into a graphics 2D format in memory. That's all that means. Uh, and we're going to just slam the data from G. And G is the thing that gets passed over, right? So um, take G and format it in a modern format. That's all that line says. Then, uh, well, we're going to flesh that out later. Okay, so we need something to display. And in this case, we're going to use uh, private um, a buffered image, which is just the main image class in Java. And uh, what it does is it, it's able to store buffered images in uh, memory and not necessarily display them. So it just like writes this detailed image. Then finally, once it's all done writing it, it's able to you're able to tell it to display it to the screen. So there are a number of advantages that I don't totally understand about buffered images, but that's one. We also need to have a tool, a graphical tool, that um, is able to draw the image to the screen. And now this. Graphical tool, Graphics 2D G, is different from Graphics 2D G2, right? And they're all going to kind of have similar names, but this is the main graphic, the artist for our entire game is right here. That's him or her. That's it. It's a little robot that we're going to use to draw the whole game over and over and over. All right, so um, in addition... No, I think that might be it for right at this second. We need a method called to initialize our variables. So public, which you've done in the past, public void init. And so let's initialize some fields right now. So we're going to say running equals true. That just means like at the beginning of the game, you want the game to run. And we're going to say the image equals a new buffered image. And we're going to use some enums to define characteristics. Oh, we have to define its width. So pb main dot width. That's how wide we want it to be. We want it to be how high the, this high. Pb main dot height. And this is an enum that we use to define some characteristics of a buffered image. This is one that just tells it, hey, we want this buffered image to be a basic uh, type of RG, like to have 
uh, pixels of type RGB, like red, green, blue pixels. I'm not entirely sure that that's critical, but um, it's the way I've learned to use these things initially. So that's what we're going to do. We also say G then, our main graphic artist, that G, that one letter, represents a really powerful little artist for this game. G equals, we're going to cast it to Graphics 2D because the Graphics 2D library is the updated version of the Graphics library. Graphics 2D image dot get graphics. Now, this is an important line, and I didn't understand it for a while. What it says is, so imagine an artist that's like totally only able to follow commands, not able to do anything independently. An artist needs a number of things, and like paints and brushes. One other thing it needs is a spot to draw. And all this line says is, gee, your graphical context, which is the technical term for it, the place I want you to draw is on image. I always want you to draw everything I tell you to ever draw on the buffered image called image. That's all this line does. It says image.graphics, that's your graphical context. It returns a graphical context to G. And you don't need to know what those terms mean. Just know that all this does is it associates G with the image called image. Um, okay, and at this point we have the init method running and when we start, when we make a new game panel, we want to initialize it. So we'll just call init in the constructor, right? This is the constructor. This is the method that, that's called when we want to build a new one, which we do over here in bbmain, right? We call the constructor method right here for game panel. So when we do this, right here, this, it's going to make, it's going to initialize all of our fields because that's the constructor, that's what it does. Okay, so now we want to um, actually draw something so that you can see it, I guess. Uh, I'll save that to the next tutorial. That's enough for this one.